just as before, it'll be great for us to put together our knowledge of the normal curve into one problem that shows we really know what we're doing. So this is the normal curve that has a mean of 250 and a standard deviation of 25. And it has three areas shaded that are not equal in size. And it's different ones than last time, so we're going to have to figure out how to find each one. Hmm. All right, well, I think the easiest thing to do would be to find this area over here first. So let's call that, I don't know, number one. <laughs> so this blue zone right here, we'll call this region number one. And we're going to find that area. Well, how do we do it? Let's go back to the decision matrix. We know an X value. So we already know an X value. We are looking for an area. We're looking for a probability. So we'll use normal CDF, lower, upper, mu, sigma. And remember, if you shade the right tail, which we do have shaded, you'll be using 1E99 for that upper boundary. So that zone will be normal. Oh, actually, let me label it area. Because that's what we're finding. So we'll find normal CDF. Left bound is 272.4. The upper bound is 1E99 because we shaded to the right tail. That right tail is shaded for normal CDF. We'll be using 1E99. And then the mean was 250 and the standard deviation was 25. Like that. Okay, so let me grab the calculator. Second distribution, normal CDF, 272.4. One E ninety nine. So one second comma ninety nine and then two fifty and then twenty five and then paste it in and press enter. So we get that, that blue zone is about point one eight five, which looks about right. I mean you always want to be able to double check it and make sure it makes sense. If you've gotten 0 0.85, then you'd know you'd done something wrong because there's no way you've shaded 85% of the curve. Now, stat crunch is easier because stat crunch, you can actually make it look like it's going to look on the page. So I want to click standard because I don't want a between. I want 250 here and 25 here. And then it was giving me an X value. So I want greater than the X value of 272.4, enter. And that looks like that blue zone that was shaded. And it says 0.185. Um, okay, then, now that I know that this area here is 0.185, then I should be able to use that to help me find the other areas. I know that the middle zone is 0.766, so that means that I know that this orange zone over here I can find that area right there. So that'll be number two. I'll find that second. Now how am I going to do that? Well remember the whole curve makes one, right? So that area right there would be one. Take away the 0.185 and also take away that middle zone which um, I guess I'll shade green for myself, right? So that middle zone is 0.766. So I'm going to take that away also. And this is what I did wrong the last time. So let me do this right. 1 minus 0 0.185. Oh, see, I'm doing it wrong again. 185 minus 0 0.766, enter. And I get 0 0.049. So I know that that little orange zone is 0 0.049. All right, now all I'm looking for is the last x value, which I'll number number three because I'm finding it third, which is an x value, not a z-score. Okay, let's go back. Looking at this decision matrix. I know all the areas in this curve, right? I know all three of them, the orange one, the blue one, and the green one. 
I'm looking for an X value. I'm looking for an X. So I'm going to use inverse norm, left tail area mu sigma. Of course, the left tail area is a little bit flexible, but we can make it work. All right, so inverse norm. Actually, left tail area will work perfectly here because I have that left tail area. It's this orange piece right here, which is 0 0.049. And then the mean was 250. Oops, wrong color. Mean was 250. And the standard deviation was 25. All right, so let me grab that. And in case you missed it, you're doing a left, right? It's a left tail area. So 0 0.049. 250, 25, left, enter. There you have it, right? So in case you have a newer calculator, you can write a little note to yourself, you're doing a left. And it tells us that it's 208.634, if they want three decimal places. And there you have it. In StatCrunch, you would tell it 250 and 25, right? But you don't know the X value, so you won't play with this. You will change this to a less than, and you'll say the less than was 0 0.049. Enter. And there you have it, 208.6. It should look like that portion of the graph looks. And so it does. So we know that our answer is correct. One other thing before we go, it should match up. I mean, for the most part, I do these with computers, so it should make sense. And you can tell eh, it's about 208, right? It looks like it makes logical sense. That region right there looks about what 5% of the graph shaded looks like. So you want to kind of get a sense for these things visually. It'll help you when you want to check your answers.